Park uh, Commission welcomes applications now uh, for 2020 local unit recreation mini grant programs. This year, 15,000 is available, uh, thanks to the commissioners, uh, for grant requests ranging from a minimum of $500 to a maximum of 15,000. Grant requests of more than 2,000 require 25% in matching funds from the applicant. Projects must improve outdoor recreation, be located in Barry County, and open to all residents of the county. Only muni municipalities or school districts can apply for the grant. So if you're familiar with your school organizations or familiar with uh, your municipalities where you live, townships, uh, villages, uh, cities, uh, be sure to, to make sure that they know about this. We will be sending everything out to them too, but sometimes they just kind of put it away. So, but this is, if you have an idea where you could use some money for that, you can partner with them to, to get it done. And uh, uh, support of project by local nonprofit organizations and residents is encouraged. Municipalities and school districts may also work with local groups designing projects. Previous grant recipients are eligible to apply and receive grants in 2020. So if you've already got one, don't hesitate to go for another one. If you've got a good idea, it may be a possibility then. Applications must be received by the end of the business day on May 15th of 2020. Applicants must complete both the application and the narrative to be considered. Applications must include how this grant will enhance the recreation opportunities within their community and Barry County. 2020 grant recipients will be notified following the May 28th Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. Uh, that should say Parks Commission meeting now. Uh, recipients will have to comply with county requirements there before receiving the grant. Grant funds will, be, will not be allocated until the projects are completed. Projects must be completed within 18 months of grant approval by the Barry County Parks and Recreation Commission. To be reimbursed, recipients must turn in receipts, a description of the project, and a photos completed project. The re reimbursement is for costs as shown by the receipts up to the amount of grant re awarded. Um, and then there are uh, application uh, applications that we can get to anybody that wants to have it. And we've been doing this for several years now, and it, what's nice about it is that it can go to all different parts of the county. Now, some of the, the places had not applied ever before, and last year we had some that did, and uh, it, it's uh, a real boon sometimes. Even, you know, $1,000 is is helps come I think in Prairieville we bought uh, bases for the uh, for the little league program that they're having there uh, and those kind of things and we've had uh, human foosball uh, projects and uh, we've had uh, landscaping project in orange Orangeville yeah, Orange Hill has, has used quite a bit of it for that, too, so. It was a prairie. Pardon me? A prairie. Prairieville. No, it was a prairie that they built. Oh, a prairie that Orangeville built. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So anyways, if, if you know of anybody or anything along that line, uh, let us know. We'd be glad to look over the application and, and uh, try to give you some money. So, yes, John. In the... 25% matching funds, does that have to be in cash or can that be in, in kind and work, labor? No, that's, uh, that's got to be matching funds. Okay. Funds, yeah. Yep. Any other questions for Commissioner Parker? Thank you, thank you. Um, at the last Board of Commissioners meeting, um, we approved the creation of a special ad hoc committee. Um, and per the board rules, the chair is the designee to appoint members to that board. Um, I'd like to announce that I have asked Commissioner Connor, Commissioner Jackson, and Commissioner Gibson to be a member of the ad hoc committee to look at um, our senior services and compare them with other communities. 
So I know that um, this needs to be approved by a majority of the board. And so um, I will try to have that moved um, to next week's full board to vote on that. Um, so I suppose right at this time, um, the chair would entertain a motion to approve the members of the special ad hoc committee. Second. Moved by Jackson, support by Parker. Any discussion? I, um, if I could speak Moved on. by Smelker, support by Parker, sorry. <coughs> <coughs> yes, sir. All I uh, would like to say is that um, I thank all the members appointed for their service and um, I wish them the best of luck. Um, I would encourage them to set some concrete goals um, before they get started too far into the process. As we've seen um, in previous boards, um, specifically ag preservation, um, that sometimes uh, it can get a little uh, discombobulated. So I have no doubt that uh, these three commissioners will do a great job, though. Any other discussion? Hearing none, the question before the committee is to approve the ad, the um, approve commissioners Connor, Jackson, and um, Gibson to to the. Oh, my words are not coming today. Approve the appointments of commissioners Connor, Jackson, and um, Gibson to the special ad hoc committee to study the commission on aging. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. The item is approved. I am seven minutes from 10, and I'm waiting patiently. I do not dance, and I do not sing. Um, my children are in school. Otherwise, I'm sure that they would perform for you. Um, I would like to recognize that um, yesterday was Dr. Seuss's birthday. So um, our school is participating in lots of Dr. Seuss activities. Um, there were lots of tall striped hats, and it was um, my favorite one is green eggs and ham. And then my second favorite is Sam I Am. So, um, Sheriff Leaf, do you have anything you could share with us? Yes, he can. Because you're leaning out there just staring at me <coughs> around that post. and. Well, there's a voice coming from that post, so. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, actually, uh, a couple of Saturdays ago, we had that uh, church security conference and uh, we had 191 people show up to that, representing 75 churches, which was almost triple what we had the year before. Uh, some of the stuff that we were teaching this year, uh, uh, obviously Jim Yarger did his uh, armed, uh, oh, I forgot the name of it. Active yeah, it's active shooter stuff, but uh, there's a typical. Alice? Uh, the Alice one? Yeah, it was similar to Alice. But anyways, Jim Yarger did that. Then we had a... Retired Grand Rapids police officer uh, teach de-escalation. And then we had uh, moralities of uh, using like deadly force in a church and all that. And then we had uh, one that was, had to do with protecting our children. And uh, then we had actually a Krav Maga instructor come on in. And uh, he didn't go out and throw people around or anything like that. But uh, <laughs> anything that was relevant or, or, yeah, to church security or... Uh, um, basically trying to stop something before it happens. So anyways, we had a great turnout. I'm waiting for the results from the, uh, the people who attended to see what they thought of the class and the training and all that. And we'll be getting that probably the 12th of this month. So uh, now I'm gonna change gears on you. Now it's the guy's bathroom <laughs> in, the, in the sheriff's office. That's hot water. So <laughs> you get a little steam bath anytime you wanna go use the bathroom there. And I'm not sure if our Plumbers know what the problem is yet or not. It wasn't the females, now it's in the men's. So we're still doing some battles like that. Um, well, I'm hearing any questions for me or anything like that. What'd you do this Saturday? Oh, yeah, that's right. We did walk for warmth. And uh, and I lost my calendar, so I missed it. <laughs> yeah, they met their goal, right? By, the goal was 3,500, and they surpassed that by quite a bit. They had a pretty good crowd there, and they had a chilly cook-off afterwards and uh, of course I had to run to Middleville but I didn't didn't get a chance to try any chili they probably ate it all too yes ma'am 
Um, last night on the 11 o'clock news, they had a thing on about the ALICE training in schools, and they said that it is now... Yeah, they're looking at it if it's traumatic. Too traumatic on the or, children? Right. Yeah. So you have heard about that? Yes. Oh, okay. We've looked at that for over a year now. Okay. Any other questions for the sheriff? Thank you very much, right. sir. Thank you. All righty. And without further ado... Next on our agenda is Mr. Eric Hackman. He will be giving us some feedback from our community forums. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for uh, allowing me to be here. Um, you should have received in your packet the. Uh, Can you move the microphone oh, I'm sorry, further yeah. that way? You should have received in your packet uh, the letter that I had put together for uh, an update um, that came out of the three second community forums that we had done. Um, and I think the goal for today, uh, a discussion would be to prepare for our com next community forum. And that the goal of the community forum number three is to essentially test uh, a position um, without out, would, out in the community and get their feedback to see if that's something that you would want to move forward with on the ballot. Um, so there were 12 different uh, jail options that we looked at, as well as 12 different COA options. Do you have all of these? Do each of you have a copy of this from the community forums? <clears throat> for, for community forum number three and, and the discussion of today, um, is there any questions about the report for community, number, community forum number two? for Eric with me that was in our packet it didn't get in your packet I did but it must I must have left it at home okay uh, I'll quickly review uh, I'll summarize if that makes makes sense <laughs> sorry that's okay um, so we had uh, the first one was um, uh, in January of 2022nd and we followed up by two subsequent uh, repeats, uh, February 13th and February 18th. Um, the, the number of participants uh, began to dwindle as we got to each subsequent, thank you, each subsequent uh, forum, and the number of first-time participants declined each time uh, we presented. Um, and we presented the different 12 different options, uh, ranging from 3.78 million to 8 million 300,000 at the COA. And on the jail, it ranged from 20.9 to 28.5. And the goal uh, of that was to show that there are many different ways to solve this problem. And the and the greatest uh, influence on cost is how big do we build it and um, whether it's an existing site, a new site, or an adaptive reuse. Um, I thought that there was a lot of good discussion that came out of, out of the uh, forums. And I, my assumption in, in hearing from you uh, in, in conversations that it was good, good insight for each of you. That leads us to the next step, which is a discussion on what, what direction do we want to put out there in front of the community to talk about next. Um, attached to that report, uh, we gathered cards from each of the, each of the forums, and I categorized them uh, from each forum. There was some, sometimes the handwriting was a little difficult to, to decipher, so we left in some asterisks. Um, and I categorize it COA, jail, and then some miscellaneous comments. And so those have all been captured and gathered into the, 
into the uh, report. And then uh, there was a young woman that made a presentation uh, and read from a script. And I've also attached that into this report as well. And then I've, I'll share this with Michael. I've got all the originals here that you can keep for your records. So our next steps um, is to define a strategy or concept um, that's inclusive of size and cost. Identify key priorities to resolve with the proposed strategy. And then ultimately uh, define the differentiators for the proposed strategy. So a discussion would occur it, with this group. Um, which direction do we want to go? I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, did you come up with a synopsis of uh, what, of any two or three things that it was the same for all of them that was important for us to make a decision? Um, Isn't that what you were supposed to do? or? or yeah, I, 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 think, I think from what I heard uh, is that the, there's much discussion about how to resolve the COA, and I think that there were at multiple times people posed um, other things to discuss, other ways to fund, other solutions that might be uh, a greater initiative than just a COA. And then I thought that there was pretty much consensus on the jail needs to be replaced. That was that would be how I would summarize those three forums. Jail would. Be needs to be replaced. Yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear much from the community saying um, not to replace the jail. If anything, I think the overall criticism of the county is why is this taking so long? Um, but that's, that was the, the voices that I observed at those three forums. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, do you think after the four forums and reading and listening, um, that you still have the same recommendation that you did in your August 6th letter about the COA. It says, based upon our findings of the above understanding and observations, we recommend option two, which was to move it into the health department. That, that was if you were going to, to do that, if you were looking at doing something with the health department mm -hmm. um, and, you, and you were going to say, which, which one would you do? I'd do option two. I don't believe that's the right answer for... Uh, for this community at all. Oh, uh, I don't so, think, okay. I, 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 I know there's been a lot of, I, th I know there's been a lot of discussion of, well, we, the health department will fit in the, in the front of the court building. My analysis of square footage and use, it doesn't fit. Oh. The only way, the only way to make it work is to only move a portion of the right. health department that's, that's to the front of the court. That's what this letter says, right. But I think it, it if you're going to spend the money to solve one problem, you're going to create another problem in the, in the devising division of, of the health department. And I, I guess I would, I would say that the correct solution would be to either replace it or um, solve it as its own issue than trying to create other issues down the road. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody have any questions for Eric? Commissioner Geiger. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Eric, what's the most important question that this Board of Commissioners has to decide right now? What do we want to put in front of the community to discuss at the third community forum, which would be a per precursor to what your thoughts are on putting something on a ballot? That way it would give you feedback from the community as to how to move forward with a ballot initiative if so if that's the direction that comes from that forum is that april 21st then uh, i think we had targeted the 17th but i think of april to of, for of april. the community forum or oh i'm for sorry no 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 language? for the community forum uh we set that date for language there. on the ballot is what i'm well for saying. language on the ballot the 17th of april was the target but the community forum we were looking at, um, the 23rd, 24th, there's some place in yes. that range yeah. of March. Of March. That, that way we avoid spring break issues, um, you know, because our adults don't just send their kids away anymore. 
So the, the, the plan would be I would get you a draft of the presentation next week. We would review that at your community or committee of the whole on the 17th. And then the forum would be on the 23rd through the 25th, somewhere, pick a day in there. That would then allow two weeks for community dialogue, uh, allow you to talk to your constituents. And then the following week, I think you have a board meeting on the 14th, where you would then formalize language to go on a ballot if you so chose. Well, um, it seems to be almost a process of elimination here. Um, I don't feel the community support is there to have a millage for a COA. And in fact, they've put it on, they've sent a letter saying that they would encourage the Board of Commissioners not to have one. Is Would that be your um, suggestion, not to have a <coughs> COA question on the ballot? Yes, based on what I've heard. I also, uh, what I also heard through the community, though, is that there is a value in the service mm -hmm. and that there's potential synergy within the community and maybe a greater, bigger picture that the community can solve together as opposed to um, pushing it through at, at this timetable. Any other comments or questions for Eric? Are we going to set a date today? Are we going to set a date today? Sorry about that, folks. For the next community forum? Yeah. I think that's that's a great idea. Um, our target dates were the end of March, the 23rd, 24th, 25th. What days did you have available, Eric? I have them all blocked. Okay. So based on our schedules, um, what would work the best for that last week of the month? March 23rd for me. Which is a Monday. Right. 23rd works good. This is a night? Monday night. Yeah. Okay. Not available the 23rd, but the 24th, 25th work. Uh, Dan, do you know what your schedule looks like? Uh, Tuesday, I'm not available, but that's, I, I can get by. I, you know, I could skip a meeting, I guess, to do this. Okay. Um, ben, what's your... Um, I wouldn't be available the 23rd, but I would be available the 24th or 25th. All righty. So we're split on who's got what going on on Monday nights. I know I have community action agency meeting at 4 o'clock that day. Um, and sometimes getting out of there before 6.30 is a trick. So, um, Michael, do we know what's available on the 23rd or 24th? Because those are the two days that we've hit. I don't, and, and that would be the location where wherever it would be. The twenty-fifth doesn't work. Decide where you'd like to hold it. I have a conflict on the twenty-fifth. Um, oh, okay. But I didn't hear that. So okay. I have a conflict on the twenty-first, the twenty-third, and the twenty-fifth. I actually have something all week that week because it's performance week. Yeah, I think um, most of us could go every night. So yeah. Um, I guess that's the, the pick the one with the least amount of resistance. Oh. Um, I'm just checking to see when Mac is. I can do the two. Mac is in April. Is it? Um, the, okay. the other option is where would we like to hold our community forum since we have opinions on where major meetings should be held? Any suggestions? Right in center. If we have the turnout that we had at the first community forum, we may not have room at Titan. But if we have the turnout that we had at um, the TK meeting, we could. <laughs> so, Commissioner Geiger. We haven't had one in my district yet. Um, I think the 911 center would be a good venue for it. Good place to give a presentation. What is the forum for, though? What's the purpose of the forum? To inform the community of our decision, right? It, actually, no. It's to it's to put an idea out there for the community to give you feedback. Yeah. So you haven't. The, right. This whole process is to help you hear from the community to help to help you make a decision that's informed and supported by your community. So is this pretty much the sales pitch to the loan officer on your new business <laughs> and and what you you'd like 
to receive an aid from the bank? If, if you consider the community your loan officer, I think that would be a, a, a Realistically, analogy. Realistically, they yeah. are. <laughs> that, so, that would be an analogy that would be correct. So realistically, this will be our opportunity to talk to our community and let them know that, you know, moving forward, we are going to be pursuing, um, potentially pursuing a, a millage request to replace the jail. And I, you know, no respect, disrespect for Woodland, but Thornapple Township didn't have many show up there either. I'm thinking it should be around Hastings. Well, 911 is around Hastings. Isn't that what you said, the 911 center? It's in my what, district. But. What, uh, oh, I see. Okay. What's the capacity there? Is it 48? It's a little bit bigger than this room. It's bigger than the Titan Center. Yeah, there's more seating capacity. What did you say it was? 48? 48? It's not a lot. It's not a very big number. It's not very many. I think um, Lees and Sharp is bigger than that, isn't it? It is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lees and Sharp is larger or can hold more than that, I think. But I'm good wherever. Me too. We could, Me too. We could call and see what the occupancy is over there. 911? Yeah. What about Grace? They're both excellent Grace venues. Grace Community Church would hold enough. I think we did, <coughs> I don't know, do they have Wednesday night service? That would be the, our only drawback. And if they have, like, any other meetings during the week, sometimes churches hold. Well, we, we kind of leave this up. We pick two or three and then let Michael get the one that has an opening when we need it, right? And then approve it next with the location next week. Mm-hmm. You talking United Way area over there too? Um, Grace Church on M seventy nine, just outside of Nashville. It, it, we got that. Oh yeah, that Sharp Leeson. That has quite a bit of Leeson Sharp room. Right. That w yes, sir. Can I ask a question, yep. Eric? Eric, so we're presenting Grace, options to the community Grace, at this next forum. Visual. Yeah, We're yeah. going to present our position and, and what we think should go on the ballot. Okay, so this is, this um, is. okay, so before that time, we're going to need to decide on capacity of the jail? I, I think. Or the proposed jail? I think what I would like to discuss today is what we think that dollar amount is, and then okay. we can start looking at what... To what level does that start to solve? Um, you know, the the budget numbers that we created, I don't want to derail the other conversation. Did you get a decision on the other piece? No, we're still hearing. Okay. Um, so I think I think the 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 process is to we've identified the need and we believe that we want to solve it in this fashion, which equates to a dollar amount that we want the voters to support. So we'll be unveiling the ballot proposal. Uh, correct. I, I would say it's a dry run. It's a it's a preliminary to to see, you know, if if you end up with three hundred people that show up and go, are you crazy? This is the dumbest idea ever. That'll make you not put something on the ballot. But if you get a bunch of people there, they're like, yeah, this is the right thing to do. I, I've been in an experience where we've gotten to that point in a school district, and the community come out came out and said. Why aren't you doing more? I mean, they had 200 people there going, this isn't enough. We want to support this more. So that's, that's the, the momentum that you want to create or at least identify the roadblocks so that you don't get to the middle of July and the community is just up in arms like, why haven't we talked about this? Why, where did you make this decision from? That's, this, that's what this entire process is, is supposed to help you get, get over the hurdle of. So would you encourage us to deliberate right now um, the size of the facility that we might propose? Yes, and I, I can help yeah. frame that conversation when you're ready to have that. That's up, up to the chair, I guess. Doesn't the location make a difference how much a jail is going to cost also? Yes. Well, you need to know where the location is before people vote on um, before... I, I would argue that if you, if you go down the path of choosing the location um, and you say, okay, we're going to make it uh, on the existing site, and then you choose to 
to negotiate or try and find an adaptive reuse to save money, um, you, you've, you've boxed yourself into a corner prematurely. And that if you allow yourself the budgetary freedom and leeway to find the most um, economical and feasible site for the jail, after you've, after you've established that the need is there and this is the funding that we have to solve the need, I think that's a more um, advantageous way for the, the county to move forward. Now, it, you may find that the, the, the community says, we're not going to support anything until we know where it is. Yeah, I've heard that already. And, and if that's the case, then, then that's what we have, to, we have to be able to answer that, which then is going to preclude any other options to look at ways of saving money in, in, in other solutions. I think the way I, I, I like to think of this is asking for a pre-approval um, in, you know, not to exceed so much and then trying to find something that fits into that budget um, like you would if you were starting a new business or buying a new car or a new house. Um, if your budget, I mean, is, as a, um, a young person, first-time buyer, you go to the bank to find out what, how much money you could borrow to to build or buy a new house for you. Um, chances are you don't make enough money to buy a brand new house. You have to buy one that's already been lived in. Um, we have the opportunity to improve our jail security, improve our community's visibility, a lot of different things. But if we hamstring ourselves to, well, we're only gonna you know, approve so much money and only if it goes right here, we may exclude a really viable option for um, where this jail could be built. Um, and I think if we discuss too many of those options in public, then we also let other people know we're looking at this property and you open the door for a developer to go in and purchase it and then sell it to you at a higher amount than what you thought you could get it for. So for all of the, the comments that we get well, have you thought about this and have you thought about that and what about this place and that place? Yes, we have. We have looked at a lot of different places and we just don't discuss it because it ruins your opportunities um, to not spend more money than we have to. Um, so that I'm, somewhere along the line, our community has to trust um, that we are doing the best um, decision-making process and, and evaluating all of the different options before we come to you and ask for an exorbitant amount of money that shocks most of us. Um, so I, I think if we have a ballpark figure of what we're looking at, um, whether it's an adaptive reuse or a brand new greenfield place, our goal is not to spend more than what we get pre-approved. Our goal is to come in under budget just like every other project. Any other questions, any other comments, concerns? I like ideas. Can, can I ask the sheriff a question? Mm -hmm. So, do you remember this sheet, Dar, the, with the projects laid out? Oh yeah. So, I see the 108 bed has a 97 capacity underneath the first one. So do you, do you think that everything that we've talked about with the judges, with the bond issues and the re reform that is that may come down the road on that, do you think that that's a bit, big enough facility? I've heard you say 110 to 120. I just am wondering what your opinion is. Well, we're looking at 50 years down the road. That's what we're looking that's at. That's true. And uh, this that study they had done with the state, uh, even there's a couple of Supreme Court justices. I'm sorry. There's a couple of Supreme Court justices now that are getting a little vocal about uh, some of the uh, recommendations they had in that study. And those are just recommendations right now. I don't know of any um, Correct. initiative done by the Congress yet to uh, move any of that forward yet. And if those recommendations work, then we'll keep them in place. If they don't work, then we got to, and we build a jail that's uh, 108 beds, then all of a sudden Barry County, you know, I think Barry County is going to grow here. Uh, and I think it's growing potential here with all the lakes around here to grow pretty fast. 
But anyways, if you uh, start looking at the long term, the 50 years down the road, as 108 beds are going to be enough. Probably, but there, all it takes is one judge who wants to go and make a name for themselves and it's going to be harder uh, sentencing and uh, so on than the past judges. Uh, a lot of the stuff that we look at too today comes from the uh, uh, Supreme Court and some of their rules, court rules. And they're already putting some of those court rules in place as, as we're having this conversation today. So how, are, how is that going to affect the jail population? Well, that jury's still out on that. But if you build a 122-bed jail, I'm pretty sure that uh, somewhere down the road, you'll have some judges that are going to fill it. If you build a 108-bed, same thing. So I didn't really want to see anything more. I was looking at right around the 110 beds, because if you build it, they will fill it. And is that completely necessary all the time? I mean, we've got tethers now that we're using quite uh, readily. And, and uh, the bond conditions, now we have the... Uh, um, Oh, Carrie's group, uh, the what is Indian, Indian 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 defense. defense, yeah. Anyways, we've got that team now that helps negotiate bonds, so people are being able to bond out. So that dropped our jail population down quite a bit. So there's quite a few factors. Uh, I'm, like I said, I'm looking at 50 years down the road. What, what will last 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, and right around 50 years, we're probably going to have to look at replacing one. Is it so? To answer your question. What, what is your recommendation? <laughs> uh, I'm asking you guys either the 108 or the 122. I don't see any need to go past 122 oh, beds. Okay. Okay. Mr. Parker. Let's say you have 108 and you got 120 beds. Are you going to be able to fill those beds with other counties' inmates? If we have space, we can always rent space out, yes. I mean, that's a, a common thing that you can, there will be people that will need those well a lot of people are adding onto their jails right now so what what is that market going to be able to be at that time oh so you you really don't have it but so you don't have any idea whether that'll be available to help us with the uh, funding of the jail by having inmates from other counties come well, in. The problem you have is the more inmates you have in a jail the more uh, correction officers you're gonna have to have in there watching them so there, there's got to be that balance. Like if uh, right now we got, I think we got right in the 70s today. And uh, so could we house five to 10 beds out to another county and still be pretty comfortable? Yes. If, but one day in sentencing, if we had a bad day in sentencing where all of a sudden we had extra 10, 15 people in the jail, then what are we going to do with them? That's going to take us up to that capacity again that we were trying to avoid. We still have to have that room to be able to move inmates around, and that includes females. And don't forget, in the last two years, we've had to have people released from the jail early because we were overcrowded. Right. I guess what I'm asking is that if you build it for um, 108 and you don't have room for those, then we have to pay someone else, right? Actually, uh, <laughs> I didn't find anywhere in any emergency plans where we had to. We had to um, take all these other steps before we started housing out in other counties. But yes, the potential is there. We've had to do that in the past here. And what do we have, uh, Michael, do we have about 20 out at one time? 20 might be a little bit high, but I think it was between like 15. You keep and saying, and I agree with you, we're looking at a 50-year deal here. Right. And I can't help but think that this county is going to grow quite a bit in those 50 years. I mean, I think it's... A, Look at your district, Dan. It's grown by leaps and bounds. I, it's a given, and I, I don't know... I, I, I just think that you... You're better off with a higher number than a lower number right now for, for that, just in case. Well, one, one plan we had years ago was build uh, more than what we need today and just don't open up those other spaces until we need them. And, uh, oh, geez. That was the strategy. Yeah. It, it, so the, the strategy for a small jail is to get, as we've talked before, a large 
diameter or perimeter that you fit all your cells around the outside of that perimeter. It's very hard to add to that in the future without literally almost doubling your, your correction staff to watch them because they're no longer in the perimeter. Um, I would like for us to look at trying to target somewhere in that 26 million range and then try and back out cells that you would fill, that you would build out now, that would allow for building out into the future. So that 50 years from now, when you have an influx where you need another 30 beds, you don't, you're not in the same situation you're in today where you have a pot over here and a pot over there and a pot over here. You just go in and you fill out those cells. So it would be basically an open room that you don't put any inmates in for now and you don't have any cells in there. You don't put in the, the expensive hardware, the expensive um, uh, cell fronts, <coughs> and all of the things that go into making a cell, but you've, had, you've at least organized and master planned your overall security system to adapt into the future for that uh, additional cells. A, a, a small jail is really, really difficult um, to, to plan that, plan into the future because it can fluctuate really quickly. If you add, you add 10, 10 bodies to the, to the jail, you've added 10% really quickly to the overall uh, population of the jail. So the jail that, that you think we should build will be able to handle more than what we're, but the, the, the actual uh, labor will be the same. That is correct. So, this, so that you won't have the labor cost when you add on. That is correct. And, and the labor cost over a jail is your number one expense when it comes to a jail. So planning for that long range will, will benefit you more than the cost of today's dollars. So we're future-proofing it. Absolutely. So do you have yeah. zone heating on something like oh, that? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Each, each pod will have its own um, air handling unit to take care of that pod. Any other questions? Well, I still haven't heard anything definite. No, we haven't. We haven't. Well, there's, there's so many what ifs. You know, this uh, study they did with the state, what if it doesn't work? All right, and they're going to have to make right. some changes again. Uh, what if the state all of a sudden decides they want to cut down on a whole bunch of prisoners that they have because their staff is so. Uh, overworked. Uh, we're talking every other day is a double shift for the State Department of Corrections. So where are we going to put them? Are they going to be leaning more on the sheriffs for that? Uh, I'd like to know if there's going to be giving out any grants for us to add on or build a jail to help house for them. You know, there's so many what ifs out there. So are you leaning more towards the 136 bed then at 26 million? I'm, I'm that's what I'm asking. <laughs> that's that. That's my recommendation. That's your recommendation. That's my recommendation into the future to, to, to protect sheriff's uh, predecessors or successors um, from having to deal with a, a jail that <clears throat> you have to add on to. I, I certainly don't want to have to look at this again or have another board be in this spot that has been. We've been a long time looking at this. Many boards have looked at this with the studies. Yeah. Well, Hoot and I are probably going to be here for another 50 years. So when we don't want to deal with it again. <laughs> yeah. Is that how many ages, years are between you two? Yeah. <laughs> I got a question. Yeah, we had a couple studies done back in, I think it's 2006. One of them recommended 120 beds. And another one recommended 150 beds. So uh, Split he's, the difference. well, that's kind of what he's done here. It's, it was kind of, all of them said just get a wrecking ball and knock the old one down because it wasn't built for a jail. Well, I got a question. Dar, uh, you have in this room more information and history in this thing than anybody else here. We have to rely on you mm -hmm. to give us an idea what you think is needed. And we're not getting that from you. And I would like for you to give us some kind of way of being able to determine mm -hmm. what we should be <clears throat> going for here. Oh. 
know, 50 years down the road, like you said, uh, the 136 beds, we just don't open up that one uh, wing or whatever you want to call it and until we need it. Okay. Gibson. The state has had some discussion about uh, local jails keeping people longer than a year. Have you heard any of that discussion? That's been going on for years. That was back in the, when Governor Engler was in office. But you still just keep them for a year right now? Oh, that's the max. Okay. I think we have one in there right now that's in there for a year. Okay. I have a question. Okay. Um, the current jail is 50 years old? Oh, I, I use 1970 as kind of the date. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so that's 30 and 20, 50 years old. So in 50 years, are we going to, what's the life of a jail? That's his expertise. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, a lot depends on, on the community size, but if the community size stays the same, there's no reason that the jail couldn't go for 80 years if it just keeps going at the same size. Um, Obviously, there's maintenance and things that have to be fixed, but usually a, a jail that, and, and, you know, prisons, when they're designed efficiently and appropriately, they, the bones of them will last a long time. Okay. Thank you. No, I, I'm kind of, when I look at this 136 bed or 122 bed, but I look at the capacity. So at 136 beds, is 122 capacity, and we're at what now? 92 capacity. No, we're in the 70s today. No, capacity. no, the capacity. capacity. Right. So you're only talking what? 20, 30 more beds for 50 years. Well, how long did the jail here on the courthouse lawn serve as the jail before we had to build the other one? No, I really don't know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it probably is not a whole lot younger than this building. Yeah. There was a picture out there, a bunch of deer carcasses lying out that they're feeding the inmates with, but they don't allow us to do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, have we heard about... So 911 uh, has had 70 people in there, but uh, they don't have that many chairs, so it's been a situation where it's standing room only in some cases. So um, probably you're, you're more likely talking to 50 people. before you then get to standing room. So if you don't fill that, you've got that extra space for, let's say you only have put 120 in instead of 136, or you put 110 in instead of whatever, that will save you quite a bit of money then, but yet labor-wise it shouldn't matter even if you're... It, you're it, it will save you on first costs. So when you go to build it, you wouldn't be building uh, some of the expensive parts of a jail, which are, are the, the cell fronts, the expensive yeah. glass, and all the hardware that goes with it. Um, you, could, you could even go as far as saying we're not going to put in the, you know, we just put in the bare necessities for lights and heating in that pod. In, in the industry, we refer to it as a white box. You know, we're just going to shell it out. Then as if and when the community grows and you need to add beds to the jail, you go in and you finish out that pod with cell fronts and cells. The same could be said for we could start with some of the pods being dormitories that could in the future be turned into cells, which allows, again, greater flexibility um, from a master planning perspective. Again, the, the key restrictor is the size of that circle. And I think if we plan the size of that circle for the 136 bed range, um, we have, I think, I'll use um, Ben's term, it, it, it future proofs you a little bit unless there's just this mass explosion of, of population in, in the county. I've got one more question. You're talking a lot about the pods. Is that the cheapest way to do a new jail is with the pods? I, I, when I speak of pods, it's more of a supervision model as opposed to a building model. We would be the pod, you guys would be the inmates and the different wings. That's how it works. So, you know, this, this group would be the females of uh, a pod of female uh, medium custody, a pod of female low custody, a pod of high-risk males, 
a pod of medium custody and then a minimum custody pod. And from my security vantage point, I could see into all of those pods. So that's the term pod is more of a supervision model as opposed to the way you would construct. How many beds do you put in a pod? It depends a little bit on the comfort of the jail uh, commanders and how, okay. how many they want. Um, but in a max, you might only put four. Um, but you could go up to as many as 32 in a dormitory situation. Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't ask me to okay. recognize. But in a new jail, do you put larger pods in for minimum security and smaller pods for maximum security, or does it pods all the same size? The pods are not all the same. They're driven by the number of inmates that are in there. So the okay. state the state mandates how many square feet the, each inmate must have inside the cell, and then how many square feet they have outside the cell in the day room space, and then how many square feet that they would have access to of, of recreation and daylight uh, outdoor type space. Yeah. Sorry, Dave. The, um, the pod design is somewhat restrictive for expansion, is it not? Correct. Mm -hmm. But so it's... When you build a circle, when you go, oops, <laughs> we needed 50 more beds, you're in trouble. Correct. And, and the, the diagrams that we've been working through have an area which I would call your low... Um, what I would leave out in the master plan of the jail is an area that you would add a pod for dormitories, which would be your low security inmates, which wouldn't necessarily need to be within that, that red dot in the middle that can see all the pods. That would be the next um, relief valve to the risk of not having enough beds. Okay. What is the model and supervision? Do you need, is it required by Department of Corrections to have direct supervision of inmates? Can they use technology, cameras, mm -hmm. you know? What's the, what's the, I mean, to build, to use the term salt box for a house is a lot cheaper than having all the pretty dorms and sizes and stuff like that. You can build a box a lot cheaper than you can build a circle and have expansion potential. When I speak to circle, it wouldn't necessarily be a circle. It would be a segmented square 90 degree corners other than where the two, where the pie pieces would come together. Um, we wouldn't build it with a radius um, rooms at all. Um, but to, to, build it in a, to build it in a linear fashion um, creates greater risk and more uh, opportunity to, for not seeing into a cell because you've, you've limited your sight lines. Yeah, when I was, uh, I, I had talked to Robert Sarah with Allegan County. I don't know if you're familiar with that jail or not. They repurposed the building. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, they're about double our population, but they were at either 225 or 250 cells. But he said they have the expansion. They build an expansion so they could go to 350 if needed in the future. So I don't think we're going to need 350. I hope not. But, um, you know, it's just a matter of when we're spending taxpayer dollars, and, uh, uh, you know, we're not looking for a Taj Mahal. I'm not looking for the world's most beautiful building. I'm looking for something that's efficient, functional. And if we can use technology for monitoring, that allows for greater expansion and better pricing on doing it. You know, I know there's uh, the pods look cool. I just don't know what the best alternative is for the taxpayer. I, I'm not... It's not my intent to make to design a building that's a Taj Mahal looking sure. building. Mm -hmm. um, we we our first priority uh, when designing a jail is security. That's that's number one, and then the the effectiveness and efficiency of the building um, to last uh, a long time. So, oftentimes you can always build things cheaper. And the things I'll say to clients all the time, you know, we can build it out of cardboard. It just won't last very long. It'll be nice and cheap. Um, but we want to build it is, is robust to last. Um, but it doesn't have to be pretty, that's for sure. Well, it's just if we can get some functionality, you know, with, with size, but allows us. Because it seems like the 120 number is what keeps coming up as a, as a very effective use of our space and dollars. Um, you know, when we're looking at it, I agree that the state's probably going to change some things. But it's the flavor of the moment in Lansing as it bounces back and forth 
you know, like the sheriff just pointed out, if somebody decides we're going to put more prisoners in there, then we can't control those things. But that seems to be the number we should be targeting, whether it's 10 more beds or minus 10 more beds. That's the medium point in it. Um, I just want to be sure that we're thinking through the process to allow us for expandability because we don't want to be 15 years into this and decide it's too small. You know, that we need some flexibility to be able to move if we need to. So there's also state and federal requirements we have to abide by too. So when we build it, okay, can you stack pods? So, can you stack pods? Yes. So uh, if you had to expand, can you go up? Well, no. Okay. I, okay. So no, you wouldn't. Okay. You wouldn't want to build. You wouldn't want to build uh, future building over occupied space, especially critical space like this. Okay. It, it comes at a very high cost. Okay. A lot of people like to think, well, we'll design it so we can add to the top. Um, it, it's an expensive endeavor to build over occupied space. However, the 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 circumference of the circle is based on half of the cells. So it, it would be a two-story cell block. So there'd be, when you start. Oh, I understand that, yeah, I've seen those. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like to me that we, it's almost like um, petals on a flower, that we have a, a fixed flower size and we only have, we need to determine how many petals are on the central spokes because we can't add petals. How, how much would it, if we choose a jail that's a size that's too small and the voters approve it, how much are we talking um, just percentage-wise to add on to that facility? How big are you going to add on? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, it, it becomes a, a loop of what is mm -hmm. at that point. Look at what the costs have done since 2009, yeah. 2006, right. and, and we're almost double what those initial estimates were. So in 20 years, if we decide we need something bigger, it's going to cost us a whole lot more than what we're looking to spend right now. And they're going to say, why didn't you do it for $2 million when you... Exactly. Um, I really wish, going back hindsight, I wish the people who built my house had put in closets. <laughs> <laughs> I am not kidding you. Every closet in my house has been added after the fact and has taken square footage away. I do not have a basement that I can use for storage. So I'm very creative in how I have to do things. And it's because, you know, I got stuff that the people in the 1800s didn't own. And as we move into the next 50 years, our jails are going to be that much more challenged with technology and everything else to make them more efficient. And so we have to plan the best we can. And, and I appreciate the, the wings that came here in 1853 because I'm still living <laughs> in the same house. Um, but I really wish they'd have put in closets instead of pegs on the wall. Oh, you want to look at something as simple as... Uh... And we talked about male and female. We haven't even talked about the transgenders or anything like that yet. Oh. So, and it's coming. And, and a temporary facility for a, a juvenile until we can get them a placement in a juvenile facility. That's huge. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you can't put a juvenile within however many feet, sight and sound, of an adult offender, even if it's just for an hour until you can get them moved someplace else. So you're really limited... Um, security level wise on what you can do and what court what court rulings are we going to get in the next 50 years and uh, it's right a lot of what ifs when we do yeah. something like this I got one more question would the pod system be more visible for the your uh, correctional officers would that cut down on your help some not cutting back on my hope. I hope not. <laughs> no, I mean, I think more, we're short prisoners staff are more now. visible. Yeah, Would you need less people watching them? Or? Uh, some jails are run where they have an intercom. They'll call to an inmate, come to the door. <clears throat> so that way it's a little more controlled, and it has to do with it, officer safety. And uh, I think that's kind of way, the way you've got yours designed. So, yeah, it, it is a little bit more, a lot more labor-friendly. So whether it's 136 or 110, labor should be pretty much the same as far as security. Well, I, I, I would say on, a, on, a, on a, a very simplified manner of how many people do you have watching all of those inmates, 
yeah. from the control center. Um, I think you're far more effective with a similar number, um, but there's, there's obviously inmate interaction that has to occur, and as that number goes up, You've got to add staff to have that inmate interaction like during the day. Like to go talk to an attorney or something like Correct. that. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but, you know, as soon as you have to then build another, I'll use Ben's example, another petal or another flower, the, the, the staff that you had watching that 136 or 110 now has to go, you have to double it to go watch the, the other 80 or 30 that you might build next to it. Um, or you have to look at ways of using cameras. Um, you know, the, the, in the industry, the most effective supervision is direct supervision, which actually puts an officer in the pod with the inmates. But it's very labor intensive on a jail of the size. You've got to get up into the three to 400 inmate size jail to make that even cost effective from a labor perspective. And what that does is that it allows the, the officer to interact with the inmates and diffuse tension while in the pod. They're, they're dealing with the inmate on a human scale and less through glass. But that means you have an officer in every pod 24 hours a day supervising those people. Um, but when we get to this size jail, it's the, the most cost-effective labor-wise would be to have that central location that can see the fronts of all the cells. Question? Yes, sir. What would we use the empty pod for? Certainly, it must have some utility, even if we weren't uh, housing prisoners in there. You wouldn't have to. Use, I mean, the the idea would be is that you wouldn't need it for anything, um, because as soon as you start using it, then you 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 enter into all of the code that goes along with occupied right. space. Okay. So if, if it's unoccupied, you can hang light bulbs in there that get you enough light in there as though it's a mm -hmm. utility space. You're exiting in your airflow. All is less. Mm -hmm. And then you add all of that stuff when it's time to expand within to that, that large volume. So it really has to be like reserved space. Yeah, it'll be specially, I mean, it's special design in that it'll be configured for cells in the future, which mm -hmm. makes it difficult to use for other things. It's also going to be inside your secure perimeter. So you don't want to put a bunch of uh, evidence storage or any uh, vehicle storage into that, which I would think would mm -hmm. be the kind of things you could think about using it for. It's inside your secure perimeter, and you want to maintain that security. Okay. Um, so what's the board's pleasure, the committee's pleasure? Sorry, we're not in a board meeting. Um, the, if I can see a show of hands, who is available on the 24th? Not. Yeah. One, two. David's what is not. What day is the 24th? That's the Monday. Is, this no, the 24th. The 24th, is, 24th is, Tuesday. is Tuesday. Oh, I'm looking at February's calendar. Calendar. So the 24th is a Tuesday. <clears throat> I'll make it. I'm, a, I'm available on the 24th. All right. So um, since everybody can be available that day, does that Every, sound I'm, like? I can't be good. For you I'm can't not, be. Where mm -hmm. are you going to be? <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. Okay. What about Wednesday the 25th? I'll make it. I can make it. I'm available. I'm not available after the 23rd. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Okay. Um, so then we're back to the 23rd, and David's not available. I can Monday. make the 23rd. I can make the 23rd. All right. Let's. Since I'll make it the 23rd. What about the What about the week before that? I mean, that was two I, weeks out. I don't know if that would be better for David. I mean, I try to accommodate. I mean, but right. I, it's not available. Up. We have five Tuesdays. Like yeah, we do. Don't be using up that fifth Tuesday. Don't, don't, don't use my fifth Tuesday. Right about. <laughs> about the nineteenth. I don't know. That's really what pull, you got pulling that up closer. Um, what, Eric? What are you available? Uh, I'm looking at the nineteenth. I think we can make a decision by that. It's spring. The 19th is a Wednesday. Thursday. Thursday. Oh, Thursday. I got this crazy February there's schedule there's here. Right there. Available you on see the, that? I am available no, on the 19th. I can't. The 19th? We can make it the 19th. Let's see what we come The intent would be to. First day of spring. <laughs> the intent would be to have you by the time your board packet for um, 
the 17th is available. I'll have a draft of the presentation that we will be making. Okay. So you'll look at that on the 17th. Um, assuming that everything is good, then it, yes, the 19th works really well. If, if there's a bunch of changes that need to occur because you don't like what you've seen, um, it could be a little tight. But I can make the 19th work. Good. Uh, 19th. All right. Uh, is, everybody is everybody available on the 19th? 19th John? is fine. David? John? Mm -hmm. Michael? Yeah. Do you think you can find us the location on the, for the 19th? Yeah, take a look at uh, what would your pr first preference be? Did you find out the occupancy? It's, um, they have, they, they've had like 70 in there, but they don't have that many chairs. And that's push, 70 is pushing standing room only. So I think, I think um, the community foundation space is probably a better fit um, um, outside of, I mean, if we think we're going to have a big space, maybe check in with the um, Grace Community Church outside of Nashville. Um, just to have it someplace different so we're not having it all the same place. Um, is that? Well, by hearing uh, Legion Sharp first, and if that's not available, check Grace with Grace Community. Community. Okay. That sound? Yep. All righty. March, no, March 19th, and location to be determined. Are we thinking seven? Yes. Madam Chair, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. So between now and next week, we're going to have to pick 136 or 122 or 108? Correct. Okay. And, and more importantly, I think the dollar amount. More importantly, what? The dollar amount. Can I ask a question? Yes. Madam Chair? Okay. So if, if we were to pick the 136 bed, but we didn't finish off those cells. What's the difference in the cost of that? <laughs> I haven't designed it yet, so I don't oh. know specifically. <laughs> I um, just, but I, I would imagine it's probably in that half a million dollar range, million dollar range would be my wag in the air right now. Just, yeah, your best guess. Yeah. Okay. I just, I just wondered. Mm -hmm. So. So even if we choose like the 136 bed option, the maximum amount of money that we're looking at would be $27 million rough budget. Right, and that's that's where I was I was in the range of if we plan for 136 and look at $26 million, that gets us in the ballpark, and we can work then towards um, getting covering that 136 if we needed to. It creates a little bit of contingency, um, and then. If that passes, if, if it goes to a, a bond and it passes, um, then the next conversation immediately thereafter is, okay, uh, do we want to look at trying to find a new location other than the existing site and get that in the works right away? Um, it, because that's that would be the next uh, critical path item on getting a new jail built. So if we... If we use the 27 million, or say a 26 million, and we decide that we can find an adaptive reuse and knock off three million off the top of it, that changes what the millage request is, or millage, or the tax rate, whatever, Correct. for the rest. I mean, if we say we want 6 0.62 for the millage, and we come in $3 million under budget, that's going to change that 0.62 considerably. That's so, correct. So we really have a moving target at what the millage rate will be. Correct. And what you want to do is basically set yourself up to cover what you're trying to achieve. Um, I, the budgets have been built with contingency in mind mm -hmm. and, and, to cover, and, and built up from a square foot cost for office space, square foot cost for jail space, site improvement costs, then uh, there's furniture included in that, all of the fees that go with that to build to a budget number and then contingency added on top of that. That's how these numbers were built. Um, and what we want to do is get under that number and, and all of those aspects, we wanna drive the budget downward. That's, that's my specialty in, in, in what I do every day is driving a project to completion and driving it to under budget. And so through design 
and through the guidance of the county, um, you know, we just say that we're going to keep working at trying to get that down and down and down and down. If, if we find, you know, if the bid market is really good and the, we've all decided that we're on budget and the bids come in and we're way under budget, it's the same scenario. Um, the bid market proved to be advantageous at that time. Any other questions, comments? Do we, do we need a consensus of what we're looking at here for bed space or a motion? I can't hear you. Baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. My fault, Dan. Do we need like a consensus or a motion on what we think we should pick here amongst us as far as what we'd like to present? What do you want? Bed from size. Us, I, I like the 122, but that's. We, we can put it out there to the community how, however best you feel. How, how do you want to f get feedback back from the community? Is it, hey, we've, got, we've narrowed it to two options. We need your help. Or this is what we want to do. What do you think? There's two different approaches. Well, I know I've had people contact me because of what they read in the paper that wasn't necessarily uh, something that people know for sure, but that uh, what's the matter? <laughs> that Rebecca standing right behind you. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> it, it, anyways, <laughs> I mean, that, that uh, and it wasn't it wasn't either her fault or anybody's fault. But the the fact is, is it got out that uh, we're not going to need as many beds in the jail anymore. And so, I my feeling on that is that uh, you know where we're at now, and and then if we go to 122, I think it's a happy medium. But I still think we're going to still have to have empty space anyways to provide future growth so why not you know build to that but not plan on uh, having the the cells in there for except up to 122 madam chair yes sir i we need some clarity on the vernacular here when we're talking about 130, 136 beds, we're, we're, we're talking up to 136 beds if we don't open that pod first. That's correct. Correct? So what's the actual number if we don't open that last pod? It depends. It depends. <laughs> depends. I mean, it, we, we haven't designed the jail yet. I mean, that's, okay. that's an extensive process. Um, we've taken some guesses. Mm -hmm. um, and I've done some sketches. I, I think the pod that I would leave off would probably be in that 28-bed dormitory type pod at this point, so, size-wise. Okay. That's well, seven cells up and seven cells down to get 14 up and 14 so, down. And so that's 106. 106. So you could you'd say 106 with a with the opportunity to go to 136. I, I think you could frame the conversation of we are master planning this future project to securely watch 136 beds from a single control point. Day one, when we open, we could be at 120 beds. But we want to get across that we're saving a lot of money by doing it that way, too. I, I, think you're, I, I think day one savings is smaller compared to day 10 years from now, 15 years from now savings, and the labor related to not having that option. Because as soon as you don't have that option, you've got to now find labor to go watch those people. So 106 with a, I'm sorry, uh, 106 with a potential expansion of 30 beds. Without, without having to reconstruct it. Without having to build a brand new jail. That's like having a Welcome guest budget for 28 people. 20. 36. That you never I furnish. Like I like that. I like that. And, and that's why I think it's, it's, it's la if you went to a new Greenfield site and at that approach, it'd be less than 27 million. That's why I was guessing 26 million would cover that. You're to go in with the idea of expanding to 136 in the future when you needed it. That doesn't sound that unreasonable that we're building space for 30 more beds for the next. I think that's very reasonable. I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea. There we go. 50 Fire. years. 
Sounds good to me. That sounds like the consensus then that we the, the 136 bed building. It's 106 with the. Uh, well, if you, 136. Yeah, max. but the building and you'd be right having us uh, that empty space. It's like when you look at a house plan and you see that possible mm -hmm. media yep. room above the garage. Yeah, the bonus room. <laughs> <laughs> the bonus pod. The bonus pod. <laughs> Having worked in bonus pods and being responsible for 120 inmates at a time um, by myself, and they are all um, free access, it's kind of, um, it's nicer to have a little bit of um, security measures built in place to accommodate um, extra help. So, how many times do we uh, have we all sat on this board and say, "I wish the commissioners back then would have done X"? <laughs> mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah. A lot. Let's do it. Thank you, sir. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a presentation. Uh, I'm going to add more graphics and pictures of what jails look like, um, and. Uh, start to sort of frame out the budget a little bit more, not sharing too much information because it's, again, it's for the most part an, an estimated guess. Um, and we'll define the project as, I'd, I'd like to do it as 100 and, uh, what's 136 minus 28 would be? 108. 100, 108, 108 bed jail with a master plan for an additional 28 beds within the, within the circumference of the project. And I'll have a little bit more detail plan sketch than you've seen before. And I'll have that to you by uh, Wednesday of next week to make it into your board package. Thank you. And then I'll be back on the 17th to, to review that. Thank you, sir. Does that work? Sounds good. Can we ask Dan? You know, as we as commissioners, do we need to address the COA, what our plans are for that? No, I'm not talking about physical plans, but people are going to be reading this article, and we want them to know, I think, from what I've talked to everyone else here, that we want to find out uh, what it would take to build a new COA, and we're doing this ad hoc to do that with, uh, and that we plan on not forgetting about COA. That's that's something that we all can agree on. Doesn't their letter didn't say new? It says a COA, right? Yeah, better space. It says new. I th I think the ad hoc committee um, will look at other, without you know knowing picking their brain, will look at other counties what they have what. Um, I think that as we move forward, I don't want to close the door on having. Um, community members make donation of either pre-existing buildings or donate towards the construction of a new building. I don't want to close the door on any of the expansion to the COA, but at this time, I think it's important that we focus on a millage for the jail. Um, we are charged with providing a jail, and um, that it's a it's a very serious. I mean, I, I'm not looking at this because 20 years worth of commissioners didn't do their job. I'm looking at this as this is the thing before us and we really need to get it done. Right. I think the Commission on Aging Services are going to continue um, with the quality and the professionalism that they've always done. I think though that we need to be mindful of how to make um, expansions and improvements upon that as we go through this process and we, we need to look at other funding options for 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 that process and not not just rely on um, the taxpayers. I think if there is um, community foundations that want to help contribute to that, we shouldn't close our, our door to accepting type, that type of contribution. Um, but we need to look at, see what other people are doing, other com communities are doing to help their seniors um, and to reach as many seniors as we can. So. I don't think that, that any of us have ever said, I don't want a COA, let's just close it down, let's bulldoze the building and let it go away. I think we have a need there and they are filling a need. I think we need to be very open-minded at how we do this in the future and, and, and how we, um, 
how we get it funded without putting the all the taxpayers um, out for two millages. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think that the COA, when they sent us that letter last week, I think that the COA realizes the the hurdles that we're facing with millage issues and their direction that um, they made in that uh, February, excuse me, board meeting was that they want us to research it and look down the road for a solution uh, without a millage. And so I don't think they think that um, just by our discussion today being solely on the jail because we have to tell Eric what to prepare for next week. They're aware that we've received that letter and the ad hoc has been organized and we're going to move forward with them too. It's just today's conversation was just about the jail. Is it safe to say that we are not trying to solve the COA problem by August? That, that's what I get from the, from the ad hoc committee, that we have urgent um, problems and we have important problems. And right now the urgent issue is the jail, but we are going to address <clears throat> the COA um, before the end of the year, have some ideas. Is, is that I, where everybody's at? I think so. All right. Any other comments? Good. We'll see you next week, or get your, well, we'll get your paperwork next week. Yep. Thank you, yeah. sir. Um, so, yes, sir. I just want, so we have the, the time laid out. We've got uh, the forum at Lees and Shire for Grace Community. Grace Community on the 19th. Yes. We're back with Eric. Eric will be here on the 17th. You're coming on the 17th. That's the correct. In the hall. Yep, to present what will be in the 19th presentation. Next, next Wednesday for your board packet? Or the cow packet, actually. Mm -hmm. I don't think that you're, you aren't making a final decision at that point. Correct? No. That doesn't require any, because the final decision, you're, that will just be for you to review prior to the forum on the 19th. And then you'll actually approve something potentially at the <clears throat> Board of Commissioners meeting on the 24th of April. And we'll be showing plans on the 19th at our meeting. I'll have I'll have a better sketch, but we're not we're not designing. We haven't designed a jail. It, it takes months to do. I think spending the the half a million dollars to design a jail is a premature if we don't have it approved. I think that would be wasted taxpayer money if we spent all of that on specking stuff and, and drawn out the plans. If, the, if we come back with a no vote on the millage, then we've spent money that we can't get back because the people said no. So I think waiting, I mean, getting the pre-approval before we go looking for the car or looking for the house is important. But I, will, I will bring examples, so you'll see examples. Okay. Anything else to come before this committee today? How about some limited public comment? Thank you, Eric. You're welcome. Back to bother you again. Jim Dell, Barry County Drain Commission. Mm -mm. Did everybody get this in their box? We put them in there? Within I the last got two my mail yet. I'll get it on the way down, brother. Is tonight we're holding an uh, informational meeting for Pine Lake, the redheaded stepchild of the lakes that nobody seems to know about, but they are very, very flooded, and LRE is handling that. We started that project last summer with you guys signing off on the $10,000 limit. Thank you. And tonight is an informational meeting to keep people on board so they understand that we're moving forward. Where so. Is that? It is the Delton, let me read exactly how they got it. Uh, da, 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 da. The Delton Kellogg Middle School, 6325 Delton Road, Delton, at 6 p.m. So anybody that can make it, we'd appreciate to have the commissioners there. Thank you, sir. That's why I sent that 
email here a couple weeks ago, the thank you, the voicemail, because without you guys helping us to get this thing started, it would have been dead in the water. Thanks so much. Other public comments? Good morning, Madam Chair, and good morning, Commissioners. <clears throat> My name is Mike Snyder, and I'm on the uh, board for the uh, COA. <clears throat> I'd just like to make a suggestion that uh, we have, or at least have the uh, board of directors at uh, COA come up with a way of funding. <clears throat> I know I have did some research we're not going to uh, uh, give to the, uh, the board uh, this our next meeting, and it gives some directions from the board to, uh, to continue on with, uh, with the, the funding. <clears throat> I've talked with several different organizations and there are ways that possibly that we can look at uh, to get the funding. And if I think if we show the community uh, that, well, yes, the, the county and the commissioners can get the funding for the COA, it could be much better to get the jail because it's passed. So I think that that's important. Uh, and I think it's something that the board can work on, and we can come up with some suggestions and bring it to you, to the uh, 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 to the commission here with our ideas, and just get your comments on it. So I, I think it's possible to do it that way. And um, I, I, as far as the jail is concerned, uh, I think there's a lot of different options that I would like to see put in front of the uh, taxpayers. I'd like them to tell me as a taxpayer what they need. Now, me go and tell them, well, well this is what, you know, do we, how do we go? The, the taxpayer doesn't know what the needs are for a deal for the future. But you all do, and I think that if you go out there with that, well, this is what we need, and this is the kind of money that we would like to get for that, that it would, it would have much more uh, substance to it. Thank you. Other public comments? Hearing none, is there any other business to come before the committee? There being no further business and without objection, the committee is adjourned.